They're singing about science. I hope he's tapping his feet now because joining me, and it's all in his honour, is Kieran Mills, physics teacher from the Dublin Academy. Kieran, you're very welcome to the programme this evening. Uh, thank, thanks, Evelyn. I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't really know if you've ever had such a wonderful introduction as a physics teacher. No, no, never. But never. there you go. I got the Big Bang all right. That, that was um, that, that was interesting. And totally accurate. The Big Bang General takes great pride in being accurate, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think my students are a little bit cooler than Sheldon Cooper <laughs> and uh, a little bit more socially adjusted. Listen, listen, Sheldon, we love Sheldon in our house. But look, let's focus on the Leaving Cert then this year. Um, and just, you know, with all the changes announced over the last few months, we now know that on this course there are some changes with a little bit of wider choice. 400 marks, I think, up for grabs here. Students answering uh, questions from a wider range of questions, I think. Is this true? And is it a welcome development, do you think, for students? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, they've le- they've lost a lot of uh, school time. They lost time in fifth year. They're losing time this year. Uh, so the big the big change to Savlin would be uh, the paper is essentially divided into two sections. Section A, which is the experimental section, that's thirty percent of the marks, and then section B, you're talking about the more theoretical uh, section. So you can kind of you can kind of break it down time wise. Three hour exam. Uh, one hour for the experimental section and then two hours for the theoretical uh, section. And so, I, yeah, go on, yeah. Just the change, I suppose, that students maybe should be aware of is that up till now, they would have just answered three out of four questions. This year, they get three out of five. Yeah, so basically, uh, we're going to have an extra question in section A and an extra question in section B. So section A, three out of five experimental questions. These are the mandatory experiments. And section B, you're talking about now five out of nine instead of five out of eight. And then I suppose there will be another announcement coming uh, in the week of the 22nd of March. Yes, we're calling that the week of clarity around here because the that's when we'll get, okay. we'll get the, the final details on the layout and format and structures for all the exams. We will be tapping into lots of papers that week. Yeah, and I think what they're what they're suggesting in uh, the literature that I've read so far is that uh, the same structure is going to remain, but what you'll have is less questions to do. So what we're what we're saying at the moment is three out of five in section A and five out of nine on uh, on section B. And what may happen then is it may be four out of nine in section B, maybe two out of five. Uh, so ba- you'll have a lot more time then to do the paper. I mean, that will be a big, big change. I mean, that will re- remove a great deal of the stress from students uh, to have that. And just you mentioned the phrase there, the mandatory experiments. Of course, you know, students in many schools not able to go to the lab to carry out some of these mandatory experiments. So will they be disadvantaged by this or how's that little piece going to work out for them? Yeah, you look, um, my... my uh, Six years now, they would have done a lot of the experiments back in fifth year before the lockdown took place. And many schools would have been like that. Uh, but others, of course, wouldn't. Uh, would you be disadvantaged? Uh, not really. I mean, it, it's always a little bit of an advantage if you've carried out the experiment uh, and they ask you something about the experiment in the exam that you can recall something that you did physically in the experiment, playing around with a nanometer or a voltmeter or whatever. But by and large, it won't really disadvantage you because at the end of the day, you know, you're going to be examined on these experiments uh, and you'll just be given a set of results. You'll have to draw a graph. You'll have to do some kind of calculation. You will draw a label diagram of the experiment. And then they might ask you a few little bits and pieces, which aren't worth a huge, huge amount of of the marks. Uh, about something about the experiment. So I don't think you'll be disadvantaged, no. Well, look, I mean, the first question in, and I'm not surprised because this happens most evenings, is about the choices in the exam. And do I have to cover the full course? I mean, students are always going to ask us this in terms of what can they drop? Are there sections they can move on from? I know generally teachers are going to say, look, we really want you to address the full course. But at this stage, do you have a line on that? Do you have guidance around that for students? Yeah, look, I'd like if you just talk about the experiments to begin with, there's about 22 experiments. I would always tell students in the past, yes, do all the experiments because there isn't a great deal to do uh, with these experiments. And I'll probably explain that a little bit to you later on. Mm. But is it possible now? Yes, I'd say it's possible now uh, to leave out a chunks of the course. You could leave out, let's say, all the heat experiments or you could leave out all the sound experiments and you You'll still have plenty of choice. Yes, you could leave out parts of the course. 
um, parts of the course that you don't like, parts of the course you haven't covered yet, and uh, you should be secure enough. I mean, if you have completed 60 to 75 percent of the course, there should be plenty of choice on the paper uh, to get by. So that they've, I mean, the SEC have. Uh, allowed you to do that. So they're more or less telling you that you haven't covered everything and we're not going to disadvantage you uh, uh, by not covering everything. So that's what they're saying. In terms of Section A then, going back to the diagrams of the experiments, again, we get questions in about this. You know, if you mislabel something, if you get something wrong in your execution of your experiment, what is the story of penalties with that? Well, look, um, I, I always tell students when they're going to do, draw a diagram, use a ruler. But I've been at some rechecks and uh, I've seen some diabolical uh, <laughs> diagrams, really awful diagrams, and they're getting full marks on them. So um, you should try and draw them properly. You should try and fully label them. I mean, what I'll say about the experiments is, and students kind of uh, worry about the experiments, but there's not a great deal of essential information you need to bring into your head in the exam, to the exam. Uh, You've got an experiment, and in your experimental book, you'll have a method, one, two, three, four, five, six, down to 10, maybe. And you don't have to write out that experiment. In the old course, we used to have to write out the experiment. You don't have to do that anymore. So essentially, what you have to do is, do I know a label diagram of the experiment? Uh, do I know what's called a suitable graph? And this is very important, because a lot of these experiments have graphs. And a suitable graph is, what do you put on each axis? So let's say Snell's law, they'll give you a series of results of angles of incidence I and angles of refraction or if you draw a graph of I against or you'll get practically no marks for the entire graph. And that means half the marks are essentially gone. You have to remember it's sine I and sine or that you have to draw your graph against uh, sine I against sine or on your graph. So you have to remember that. So you have to remember the suitable graphs. So if you know what the suitable graph is for every experiment, you have a formula, which is probably in your table book anyway, that you're going to use. And then you know a few experimental details. And what I mean by experimental details are uh, errors, precautions that you should take to get a better result. You could actually summarize all of that, one, all of that experiment on a flashcard. Diagram, suitable graph, formula, and a few experimental errors. And that's the essential information you carry into the exam. And then I, I always tell students that you know a lot more than you think you know. You've been doing uh, they physics always for say two that. Years. Teachers always say that, but then you sit in the I exam they that, and yeah, you go, they... they said I know, but it's gone. Come here, Kieran. you've given me such great tips there, I feel I could give it a run out myself. But what I'm going to invite you to do, okay. you take your flashcards there now, but on the kettle. And we'll come back to you in a few minutes with some wrap questions that are coming into us on 51551. Um, so thank you so much, Kieran Mills there from the Dublin Academy. Kieran is not going too far. He'll be back to us. So get those questions into us. I think we still have uh, Kieran on the line there. Kieran, you're there with us. Yes. Yeah, I, I no surprises here. Lots of questions coming in for you, including this one. I'm um, just wondering if it's a good idea to learn everything on the course for this year. Well, we kind of dealt with that, but I have not learned magnetism or lenses. I would like to learn them, but is it a waste of time? Over to you, Mr. Mills. Well, I mean, I they like can the leave sigh, out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no. I mean, they can leave out uh, parts of the course. And, you know, parts they haven't done, parts they don't like, leave them out because you're talking about an extra question in each section. And as we said, what, what do you call it? Your week of clarity, is it? Yeah, the week of clarity. Uh, so the week of clarity, uh, we'll probably have to do even less questions. So yes, look, you this year, you can leave stuff out. And what what can you leave out? Well, I'm not saying. Uh, <laughs> you can leave... You can, leave out, you can leave out a lot of stuff. Yes, of course you can. OK, now, quickly, what time should I spend on the various questions? I suppose this is more sectional thing, really, is it? Yeah, well, I always say start section A because an easier section. Uh, spend one hour maximum. That gives you about 20 minutes per question. And then you've got two hours for section B. Um, there's a, the first question in section B, is there's another change to the paper, which I should mention, Evelyn, um, where you have a little bit more choice. It's a mixture question. Of, it used to be 10 short questions from all parts of the course. Now there's 12, 12 parts, so you do eight out of 12 parts. I always tell the students to do that because it's easy. And uh, I'll be talking about 20 to 25 minutes per question. But of course, when your week of clarity comes, all of that timing will be thrown out and you can just 
show off your knowledge, I suppose. Just go into the exam and show off your knowledge at that point. Yes, I feel actually generally more and more the exams are going to be a more pleasant experience for students, you know, with the choice, with it, and that's going to be really interesting to talk to them afterwards. When I they agree. Review. Just quickly then, finally, oh, Kieran, my daughter is currently in TY and trying to choose subjects for leaving cert, trying to decide between physics and biology. Why would you recommend physics over biology? Over to you. What do you think? Oh, well, I have to be very careful here with all the <laughs> biology teachers out there. Um, it, it, look, it depends what she wants to do. So I can't really advise unless I, uh, I mean, physics is challenging. It's lovely. It's full of modern physics. Uh, you had the big bang on earlier. We'll talk, we talk about quarks and muons and taus and all sorts. But, so if your daughter is fascinated by such matters, um, go, go for what she enjoys, what she likes. That's always a good indicator. Uh, what does she enjoy? What she easier, like? easier, won't it? Of course it does, yeah. Of course it does. Now, um, another last question there coming in about, uh, oh yes, about if you make a mistake in calculations, do you get penalised through the paper? There you go now. Uh, Penalties, I suppose. Well, Inaccuracies, you, yeah. Yeah, like if you get, yeah, if you if you make a mistake and that gets carried forward, uh, you should just be penalised for where you made the mistake. That That's all. Um, Don't worry yeah, about it. So you... you yeah, well, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Just, and, just, just be careful. And the old, the Harry Chestnut about going between honours and higher level and ordinary level. Is there a significant difference between the two? Yeah, I'd say there's quite, quite a difference. Yeah, I'd say the the higher level, um, it would be quite, yeah, quite different and uh, a lot more difficult. And a lot more difficult. Okay, but if you're ready for higher level, you're you're doing really well. Yeah, well, look, uh, if you're unsure of yourself this year, I mean, the advantages are there this year to do higher level if you were a bit iffy about it maybe two or three years ago because you've got less content to cover because you can leave stuff out because you're going to have more time. Yeah, so I, I would I would agree you should if you're if you think you can do higher level, do higher level, of course. Listen, thank you, Keith, for or Karen for those inspiring, encouraging words. That's Kieran Mills there.